This is Kampala, the capital city of Uganda, commonly referred to as the city of seven hills. The capital has an estimated 3 billion residents and nearly half this number commutes from neighboring suburbs. Since the current government was voted into power, the face of Kampala has been on a fast-tracked plan of development. Infrastructure has developed quickly, which has abated the growth of the capital into a hub for business and trade. In the city of Seven Hills, transport is a labored notion because of the cost of moving and heavy traffic jam. Motorcycles, which are locally referred to as Boda Boda, are a popular mode of transport that gives access to many areas within and outside the city. However, taxis and buses are the preferred mode of transport further out of the city and the country. Located in the Horn of Africa, Uganda is often referred to as the Pearl of Africa because of her natural endowments and wildlife. This nation of nearly 38 million suffers the constraints of being a landlocked country bordered by Kenya, Tanzania, South Sudan, the DRC and Rwanda. She largely depends on trade in agro-products that are trucked to ports on the Indian Ocean. The produce, which is mostly transported by road, travels 1,250 kilometers, spending at least 48 hours in transit from Kampala, the capital of Uganda. The roads in Uganda are yet to measure up to world standards, and for that reason alone, transport of goods and services has been hampered. The most challenge is to face on the road, especially it's a jam from Kampala to Jinja. You can take a lot of time from Kampala to Rugazi because the roads are very narrow. The roads usually, they are the, the engine of economic growth. You can't have a developed nation without good roads. The number of cars on the roads is overwhelming and is still growing. The country's GDP has suffered tumultuous shakeups over the years, but according to the country's central bank, in 2014 it stabilized at a growth rate of 4.5% and a GDP of $25 billion per annum. Because of the economic growth, vehicle numbers have dramatically gone up and the economy is focused to grow further. So because of this economic growth, we have a lot of traffic jams. While, for example, it used to take 30 minutes to Jinja. Today, you'll be lucky to reach Jinja in less than two, two and a half hours. The delays on this road, caused by relentless traffic jams and road accidents, prompt road users to find alternative, sometimes even longer routes to Jinja. The government of Uganda has made commendable strides in correcting the transport defaults in the region. A few years ago, of course, road network like most African countries was bad. Um, it was a constraint, and still a constraint still, but have dramatically improved. Its arm, Uganda National Roads Authority, UNRWA, took over maintaining and building roads and has registered several successes. Uganda National Roads Authority is one of the agencies that is mandated to develop and maintain the national road network. We have 21,000 kilometers. The entire country network is about 85,000 kilometers. So the balance is with the districts, some with the Ministry of Works, and then local councils. But our network is only 21,000 kilometers. But the government's efforts alone can never be enough. The government has reckoned the same and sought more long-term solutions. After fruitful pondering that involved a lot of research and comprehensive discussions, the government of Uganda has commissioned a public-private partnership to build the Kampala Jinja Expressway. It's the way to go for the future. We've got to involve the private sector in developing infrastructure because government by itself should facilitate the private sector. And so it will achieve both objectives. One, access resources quickly. Two, uh, invite the private sector to work together with the government to develop key infrastructure. The government of Uganda has commissioned the public-private partnership policy in effort to deliver better transport services to its citizens and steer local and regional development. Government has uh, prioritized uh, roads as a core infrastructure and therefore a lot of uh, investment is done, or is made in roads. So the first one is funding. The second one is developing uh, local and international capacity to, to do the roads. 
We work with a lot of uh, foreign contractors. We, our own industry is still rudimentary. But even within the UNRWA, we are doing a lot of initiatives, including um, capacity building. And the idea is to build a robust institution that can, maintain, can develop and maintain the network. Before we prioritize any project, we do a lot of studies. And one of the studies is the internal rate of returns of these projects. And also the economic importance of it, especially for the future growth of the country. We have gone in to say that we must prioritize the infrastructure. And the biggest infrastructure is roads and railways. Building the Kampala Jinja Expressway is the first project under public-private partnerships. Kampala Jinja is actually the first of a series of infrastructure projects um, that the road sector is trying to bring to the market. Um, so it is very important that this project is done well. And to do a project well like this, you know, it means the government has to be fully committed, the private sector has to be um, committed to this, which I think they have demonstrated that. We've held a lot of investor calls practically with all global investors and there is a lot of interest. This is the lifeline of our economy because it connects us up to the sea, port of Mombasa. So this is something that, that I think appeals to the private sector. And because this is the first of many, you know, it always offers you that opportunity that there is certainty of a pipeline of projects coming. So you're not actually um, putting in all your resources for just one project, but actually you could have a lot of follow-on follow -on projects for this because the government has actually demonstrated these commitments. This project provides a tremendous opportunity for the right private sector partners to get involved in redefining the potential of the Northern Corridor. The 77-kilometer Kampala Jinja Expressway will not only ease transport in Uganda, it will create a much desired link between the coast of East Africa and countries that traverse the Northern Trade Corridor, offering incentives for trade, tourism, and regional integration. Almost 90% of our imports, they pass through the Northern Corridor. And the Northern Corridor that is starting from the port of Mombasa, going through Nairobi, you are in Uganda, Kampara, you go down to Kigali, to Burundi, and then you have a spa going to northern Uganda and joins the other side of Congo to Gori and Aru, then Mori going to Juba. That's our lifeline, and that's how important it is. The construction of this road will have direct permanent implications on the lives of all Ugandans, but particularly those living in close proximity to the towns the road will go through. The road will begin at Nakawa, right opposite the Uma Show Ground, the entrance to the Uma Show Ground, and then it will go via Kasokoso behind the, that hill over there, and will go behind Namave before crossing this particular road on the north side, and then we'll end up at the Ni new Nile Bridge. As you know, we are constructing a new Nile Bridge. It will be a very uh, fast class road with eight lanes from Kampara up to somewhere towards the Chambogo. Then from Chambogo up to Mukono, they will turn into six lanes. Then from Mukono up to Ginger Bridge, there will, there will be four lanes. So you can see that this is a very wide uh, roads which can accommodate a lot of traffic volume. It will mean a boom in small trade, service provision and agribusiness. The road will provide a less congested channel or transit option for those who seek to reduce travel time and costs. Even those areas which they used to think that the internal rate of return is too low, when we put a Tamaka road, which I can say may be a political road, it has stimulated the economic growth. This will be a toll road, you know, so um, inherently you would expect that our revenue will accrue to government and this is in form of taxes as well. So this is something that generally will help the economy uh, downstream. The road provides the same advantages to the other neighboring countries that are landlocked. It's an international highway, it's part of the Northern Corridor Road. So everybody will definitely benefit from having the Jinja Expressway. This road to sea from Mombasa is not only serving Uganda, it serves Eastern Congo, it serves 
Rwanda and Burundi, Western Tanzania, South Southern Sudan, now, nowadays Central Africa. So it's, it's key to economic growth of, of this region. The success of the Kampala Jinja Expressway will mean the same for similar projects that will soon follow after its completion. Using the same model, we'll be doing the Kampala Mpiji Expressway, the Kampala Bombo Expressway, and then the Kampala Outer Belt. And we want to be able to open a ring road around Kampala to create, uh, to remove traffic from the center so that people can use the outer belt. This country has been experiencing economic growth faster than the planners. And time has come, the planners have to catch up with economic growth. Therefore, my appeal is the private sector to partner with the government and put up this infrastructure. My appeal to Ugandans is to own the asset and their investment, because this is everybody's investment. This is as much as the business that you do. This is your business. This is your infrastructure. So everyone should actually own a piece of Kampala Jinja Expressway. We'll be obliged to maintain this road to a particular standard. Um, the traveling public can expect to have a road that will always, always, always be able to provide a level of service that is expected of an expressway. So no potholes, no rutting. Um, when their vehicle breaks, you know, breakdowns, we would expect that to be cleared uh, fairly quickly. So all these benefits really will bring a lot of um, very, very tangible and visible benefits to the traveling public. The success of this project has nearly been written by the will of the government, but getting the right investors on board will in fact guarantee its success UNRWA is seeking to invite bids from the private sector to design, build, finance, operate and transfer a limited access tolled expressway with a design speed of up to 120 km per hour between Kampala and Jinja. This project is the first of its kind in Uganda. Partners with government will not only reap big but shape the history of this great land.